हॅलो स्टुडंट्स वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑन बायोफार्मास्युटिकल्स आय एम ऋतुपर्ण करकरे फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नॉलॉजी इंजिनिअरिंग के आय आय टीज कॉलेज ऑफ इंजिनिअरिंग कोल्हापूर वी आर करंटली लर्निंग युनिट नंबर वन लेट एस प्रोसीड विथ लेसन नंबर फाईव्ह दॅट इज ड्रग डेव्हलपमेंट इन द प्रिव्हियस लेसन फोर वी टॉक्ड अबाउट द ड्रग डिस्कवरी स्टेप ऑफ द डेव्हलपमेंटल लाईफ ऑफ अ ड्रग कॅन्डिडेट we took one case study of small molecule at that time now i am going to consider a macromolecular case study that is biopharmaceutical for this next explanation so consider biosimilar molecule as a part of biopharmaceutical and let us discuss the details of further steps us fda defines a biosimilar molecule as a biological product that is highly similar to and has no clinically meaningful differences from an existing fda approved reference product in terms of safety of the drug purity of the drug and potency of the drug the safety purity and potency this is very important triad now when we consider the similarities between a reference innovator developed by a pioneer company and the biosimilar molecule after patent expiry then these are the similar notions so your reference product reference biologic and a biosimilar molecule will be exactly same in the primary structure the mechanism of action of the innovator and the biosimilar will be same because of that only we say that there is a no clinical meaningful difference the indications of the reference product and the biosimilar will be almost equal or in some cases biosimilar may be approved for a fewer indications the strength and dose of biosimilar and the reference innovator would be similar the route of administration of both biosimilar and the reference product would be similar in certain cases biosimilar may be approved for a fewer routes and the last point is bioequivalence so bioequivalence for both the products is also similar but talking about then when we say that reference innovator and biosimilar molecules are similar they are not same then what are the real differences the first and foremost difference is there are minor variations structurally like glycan patterns or a few amino acids the manufacturing process of the reference innovator company and biosimilar manufacturing company would be different the packaging and delivery systems for both of these molecules may be different the storage requirements of both the molecules may be different the expiration dating also could be different and the cost wise there is a difference between the innovator reference and the biosimilar molecule now when we consider the biosimilarity assessment of the molecule a particular industry develops an innovator biological reference molecule after its patent expired the other competitor industries start producing the biosimilar version of the same innovator but still these all industries have to work extensively for the analysis and development to prove that our molecule is really a biosimilar the figure indicated in this slide gives us a four quadrant method where all the different type of analysis or extensive analysis and characterization is to be performed so that we can prove the biosimilarity this entire process is only called as biosimilarity assessment in the four quadrants the first comes is a physico chemical and structural characterization by different analytical methods so let us see this chart so this chart indicates the different methods like mass spectrometry 2d nmr x ray crystallography isoelectric focusing peptide mapping polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis n terminal sequencing c terminal analysis all these methods considers the extensive characterization of a biosimilar molecule and has to be compared with the innovator molecule the second important quadrant is the preclinical or non clinical animal studies the third one is 
comparative clinical studies that is human trials and the fourth one is clinical pharmacology that is the all the testing on humans with respect to drugs pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics that is how drugs behave in the body and finally the functional assays of that molecule also to be performed and the characterization will be completed now let us talk about the further approaches what is done in the preclinical trials so preclinical trials are the animal testings now in this case of drug testings people go for pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamic profiling toxicity of the drug testing mutagenicity of the drug immunotoxicity of the drug so all these methods are tested in the animals there are different animal models available for the same starting with the rats mice till monkeys there is one real case reported like only 10% of the drugs out of all the drug discovered in the library will reach the clinical phase after successfully passing the preclinical trials and it takes many years and many more investments after the preclinical trial animal testings are passed by the authority then the further step comes into picture is clinical trials that is human testing there are total four clinical trial phases phase 1 2 3 and 4 in phase 1 there is a safety testing of the drug in the healthy human volunteers so real patients won't be addressed in this trial 1 phase the duration average for this particular testing is almost 1 year in the clinical trial 2 the efficacy and safety testing of the drug is done in small number of the patients so here volunteers are not used like a healthy one so 100 to 300 patients are tested and it will take around 2 years average for completion clinical trial phase 3 talks about the large pool of the real patients like 1000 to 3000 and it will take more time like 3 years average and then finally the phase 4 clinical trial that is post marketing surveillance so after the third trial all the data will be submitted to the regulatory authorities and then once the regulatory authorities license the product then only it will be going on sell and post marketing post sell the clinical phase 4 will be monitored and it will take several years now talking about which are the regulatory authorities so in majority of the countries the regulatory authorities are named as food and drug administration fda the food and drug both are the consumable products so both the things are considered under the same authority so looking at the table given here in this slide the fda has to regulate not only the drug affairs but also foods blood supply and blood products cosmetics medical devices as well as some radioactivity based substances this fda regulates the different bodies and there is some interconnections between their working style so there are different bodies like center for biologics evaluation and research center for drug evaluation and research center for veterinary medicine etc so every country will have their own regulatory authorities commissioners bodies and their interconnection functionaries then coming to the last step steps of regulatory authorities the industry researching on a new drug files the application based on all these preclinical data and trials to the regulatory authorities this application firstly would be called as investigational new drug application ind application these are submitted to national and state level authorities now there are various committees of these authorities working at different levels to have the control finally if all the data submitted is passed by these regulatory authorities then they grant the manufacturing and marketing license for the same drug same biosimilar to the industry and finally post sale post marketing also by post marketing surveillance these authorities will keep check 
on the distribution of the drug so that no malpractices in the production can happen. So, this is all about the entire drug development life cycle of any drug. Now, here is a reflection spot for you. List the various committees, various bodies working for regulatory and licensing authority FDA India with their functionaries. Here we end the lesson number 5. Thank you.